what are we doing? We're talking about Batman. All of them. All of them. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Mad Max podcast. I'm here with Miguel, and we are going to be talking about best of the Batman movies. This is not only just Christopher Nolan's Batman, uh, Tim Burton's Batman, Joel Schumacher's Batman, uh, Zack Snyder's Batman. We're talking about all the Batmans. Adam West is in there, man. Adam West. Oh, yeah. I don't have... Did I write down the director for that one? I did not. But Adam West. I think Adam West remembers the director for that one. It's fine. R.I.P. Adam West. All right. Oh, yeah. I feel bad now making that joke. God rest his soul. He, uh, I forgot he passed away. Yeah, he passed away. Do we still have Julie Newmore? She's oh, still around? I have no idea. Shit. Let me look up. I just I just remember Adam West because I think a year or two before he passed away, um, he came to Dallas Comic Con and um, or Dallas Fan Expo. I'm sorry. Um, bless you. Thank you. So, and uh, and yeah, cool. yeah, him and Burt Ward came, and I remember I wanted to see them, but, but we didn't go that year for some I reason. Don't think I don't we, remember. Yeah, we didn't go that year. Oh, I miss I'd go if Julie Newmar was there and she's still around. <sighs> Fucking legend, man. I'm so so sad. I want to. This year's fan expo was going to be the best ever, but it's all right. Anyways, that's, that's not the topic. No, it's not. <laughs> Memories of things I missed in 2020. Yeah. I think it's good timing, though, because, you know, uh, Batman's all over the news right now because of uh, Pattinson getting COVID. And now they're supposedly yeah. rumors they're resuming filming without him right now to shoot the, the other scenes. Well, with, I mean, uh, it's, it's wise. Yeah. So yeah, they, they if, everybody, if everybody else came back COVID negative, then I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of scenes that they can film with um, Paul Dano and everybody else. Yeah. You know, Colin Farrell. Yeah, they can they can film without him. So I can imagine. Colin Farrell's test results. Colin, you don't have COVID. Or right, thank God. But you do have three strains of gonorrhea. It's like, oh, he's <gasps> it's like Colin Farrell. He's had that for like 20 years. It's cool. It's Jesus. Fine. Love Colin Farrell. <laughs> yeah, but he loves you, Colin Farrell. He's gonna talk shit. No, I'm saying he's a legend ho. <laughs> saying, man. Anyways. All right. Well, we're gonna be talking about best of the Batman movies. So we did. We watched all of the Man, you made me blitz all those in a week. Yeah. Well, I just before the before the even the trailer came out, we were watching the Batman movies. Um, we watched them, the Christopher Nolan versions first, because those are those are the latest ones that came out. So we still remember those. And then we worked our way backwards, basically. The last movie that we watched was the original 1966 Batman with um Adam West with Adam West and Burt Ward. Ward. So that way it was like all fresh in our heads. And that was the first time I seen that Batman. So it was crazy. You never did you ever watch any of the TV shows? I did, like when I was a kid, but I don't remember a lot about it. I think we all did when it when it came on Nick at night. Uh, yeah. You know. It yeah, it was bomb. But it yeah, I'd never seen the movie. And so um this was my first time watching the movie and it was it was great. It was it, it was so so much fun. God, the first act consists of a big roper shark attacking Batman. <laughs> And he has to use fucking shark spray. Jaws. It was Jaws. It was a. It was like a six foot big rubber. It wasn't Jaws. It was. It, it looked like it was, something near you would have made in, in I, prop it, class in college. I mean, it looked like a big old stuffed animal was was grabbing on the Adam West whenever he was hovering on the ladder from the helicopter. And he, I mean, they just have like the body of the shark at a scene and i just the whole time we were watching it i just we're imagined rolling. i just imagined like in you know a uh, a prop person or a you know a an extra or something just like you know furiously shaking the shaking his <laughs> tied onto adam west leg it was hilarious yeah, it was it was fucking hilarious <clears throat> at the time i don't know how they felt about it they, they had to be people laughing even back then how it's like it's so campy nowadays, but I always wanted to go back in time to see how people felt about it then, in that world. You uh, know? It was it was just a lot of fun to watch for me. Like I I mean back in the day, I mean it was the pow, slam. Um, yeah, it's all part of the camp and shit. Yeah, of that I mean, show. so it was just it was just a good time. I wasn't expecting it to be. I wasn't expecting it to be anything like the other Batman movies. So this was just fun. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So I'm glad that we I'm glad we watched all of them. Did you write yeah. your? Uh, you got a list of who you thought the best, um, Bat Bruce Wayne was, and the best. Well, uh, this is this is kind of the format that we're gonna do since we watched four, since we watched eight Batman movies. Um, 
technically it's 10 including batman versus superman and uh the lego batman i'm including lego batman why because i love it <laughs> it's still better than batman and robin <gasps> i will say i mean that. It, it is but still like I mean, Lego Batman is like top five for me. <laughs> really? Oh my! I love Lego Batman. It's good. It was so much better than I thought it was going to be when you dragged me to it to the oh theater. Um, it was great. But anyways, but yeah, we have um, we have a kind of a formula of you know um, best Bruce Wayne, our least favorite Bruce Wayne, best Batman, least Batman, favorite Batman. So we kind of have this um, chart that we're going to go off of. Um, but those are basically our categories. Best and worst Bruce Wayne, best or worst Batman, best or worst Gotham, overall city of Gotham and how it looked. Best and worst villain, best and worst suit, best and worst um, Batmobile. But that also includes the um, also includes the like airplanes and motorcycles, stuff like that. All of the, his, so, uh, his rides. Basically. All of his, his rides. Whips. Okay. Um. I included best Alfred. I'm not going to say worst Alfred because I think all of them were very good Alfreds, um, but I do have a favorite. Oh, I know who your favorite is. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. And uh, just our overall um, least favorite Batman movie and then our favorite Batman movie. So we'll say that for last because we have so many, oops, sorry, because we have so many categories and um, things that we're going to go over. We are discussing up to 10 Batman movies. We, we really hyper-focused on the just the Batman specific movies. Um, but <clears throat> those are the ones we rewatch, but we're also are going to include um, stuff from Batman versus Superman that we like and Lego Batman just for jokes. But you know, in the future, it sounds really random, but you know how there's deep fakes right now. We're going to be able to rewatch some of our favorite movies with other actors playing them. Like we're going to watch um, a version of the dark Knight uh, with Michael Kopp being that, that um, Alfred. You know, it'd be really weird and creepy to see that, to see Michael Koff as the Alfred, you know, taking Michael Caine's place. But I'm telling you, in the future, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have the ability to switch up actors. Um, yeah, I don't like that. Movies. Yeah, you don't like that, but that's what's coming. Oh, I don't like that. I just watched The Shining with Jim Carrey in its entirety. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I'll try to have, um, because we're talking about so many movies and different categories, I will have timestamps in the description. Um so that way, if you want to jump to one um, and not listen to us go on, and I don't know how long it's going to be. I expect this to be it's a long podcast. Long. I don't know. No, it's simple. Depending on how long it is, I'll break this up into two parts. I just want to give you all a heads up because I don't know what I'm doing yet. But with this podcast, depending on how long it is. So we'll see. Uh, we might also, we already did a kind of reaction um, a video on the Batman trailer with Robert Pattinson. Yeah. And so I'll leave that in the description bar too. We might, we'll probably bring that up a little bit, but we're not really going to touch on it a lot because it's we've already discussed it. You yeah. Know, Cause it's, he's supposed to be the new it <clears throat> thing. Like the way people think that, um, Tom Holland is now the quintessential Spider-Man, whether he deserves that title or not, people are going to put that pressure on Robert Pattinson now. So it's, oh, yeah. it's fun to look back in retrospective and, see what worked and what didn't i think the studios have learned a lot <laughs> and so have fans what was your first thing you put on there was it the best bruce best bruce what are yours best... first oh man um honestly i think my favorite bruce wayne i think my my favorite bruce wayne might be um christian bale he is for me christian bale at the same time i mean that bruce wayne he got to do what, what Michael Keaton had said in different interviews, what he wanted to do with that character, which is looking at his background, look at how he ticked. You mm -hmm. know, that Bruce Wayne was given the most dimension of any Bruce Wayne we had ever seen before. Yeah. The most dimension, the most background. You know, we got to look into psychologically what made him tick. We didn't get that before. And you feel bad because you kind of wanted to <clears throat> see that with Michael Keaton's Batman. You understood where he came from when he was saying that kind of thing. Yeah. And it was. I mean, I just feel like he was the one that kind of personified it the best. Um, you know, he was in the board meetings, but he would be asleep. He didn't care. Like, he didn't care about the business side of Wayne Enterprises. And um, I feel like the other movies kind of made, like, it, it I feel like the Michael Keaton and um, Val Kilmer, uh, Bruce Wayne versions, like, made him kind of heavily influenced with um, 
um, Wayne Enterprises and made him more involved than Christian Absolutely. Bale's did. Yeah. Whereas like Christian Bale had um, Fox to uh, handle all the business side of things. So yeah. and they didn't have it on the other one. But but yeah, I think Christian Bale is my my favorite Bruce Wayne. I think so too. I think that the one thing that Joe Schumacher forgot is that there's a difference between Bruce Wayne, the real person, and Bruce Wayne, the caricature he has to portray to the public. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was really good about The Dark Knight, my favorite Batman Begins, is that you got to see both Bruce Waynes, the person he really is, who's Batman, and then the character he has to play, which is the douchebag playboy. Um, you know, the way he brought in those two models, you thought would be so, well, here comes a prostitute <laughs> in Batman Begins. And oh, they yeah. just jump in the pool. Oh, no, that's the Dark Knight. Oh, that, was, that was the Dark Knight. Was it when they jump in the pool? Was that the Dark Knight? I thought that was Batman Begins. No, it was Batman Begins because it was with Katie Holmes. When they jump in the pool and he's like, I'm buying this restaurant. Wasn't that Batman Begins? Uh, I yeah. thought that was I thought that was the Dark Knight. Either way, he did that same thing in both movies. Right. Yeah, he's playing the douchebag playboy <laughs> who wasn't really him. That's just that we had to play. Right. Joel Schumacher's Bruce Wayne. Um. There wasn't a difference there. It was George Clooney being George Clooney as exactly. a playboy. George Clooney was like, I got hired, and I'm here to just give my paycheck. <laughs> he was having fun. He, I, he yeah, he definitely did have fun. He, he Is that Are you saying that that's your least favorite Bruce Wayne? Probably, because of the fact that, um, I mean, it was, I like George Clooney, but it was George Clooney being George Clooney, who was the biggest, one of the biggest playboys in the fucking 90s. Oh, yeah, it so, was... It was just like, oh, when are you going to get married? It was like, was that was that it towards Bruce? Was that towards George Clooney? Exactly. Yeah. I was like, nah, that's okay. This this is just, basically just trying to be like, oh, Bruce or uh, George Clooney is a Bruce Willis of our time. Bruce Wayne. Or Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wrong Bruce. <laughs> I knew I was gonna do that. He kind of was, especially back <clears throat> in the '90s, man. Um, and, and again, he. That separation really wasn't there because you saw Bruce Wayne being a playboy and handling the business side of things when he was handling the telescope. Yeah. The difference wasn't there. Joel no. Schumacher didn't give a shit about that. He was making a live action cartoon. Yeah. But I mean, I have like everybody. You're such a if, sucker for that freaking listen, movie. Listen, if anybody listens to our podcast, Ugh. they know I have a soft spot in my heart for Batman and Robin. So deal with it. I mean, when you watched it, you realized how bad it was, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I still had a great time watching it. <laughs> Like I, it was almost the same thing as watching the, the 1966 version of Batman. You were just like, God, you know that they're saying these lines, these horrible lines, especially um, uh, Arnold. And after, right after they're off screen, you're like, oh, I hate that line. <laughs> like, yeah, it was the dialogue was awful. The dialogue. There were times when the dialogue in the 1997 uh, Batman and Robin was worse than that of the 60s. The 60s was self-aware and it had some wit, but there were some cringy-ass lines oh, no. in the 97. Whenever we get to Batman, the when we talk about the actual movies, I have all of my favorite, like, zingers that Burt Ward said. So don't don't oh, you... God, I, they're I, so bad. <laughs> um, it was I, always holy something. Oh, yeah. there's I have, like, six or seven of them written down. Maybe, Why? Maybe not that. <laughs> it's just... it's. Funny. There was there was <clears throat> Burgess Meredith was in my opinion the best part of the um nineteen sixties Batman uh as Penguin. He's supposed to be a little goofy guy that was a little smart ass. Um I think that was lost in Tim Burton's gross penguin. Okay, well we'll we'll get, we'll get there. To that. We'll yeah. get there. Okay, so So no, so your favorite Bruce Wayne was Christian Bale. Who's your least favorite? George Clooney. Because yeah. it was George Clooney being George Clooney, like yeah. you said. So this summed it up very well. He fucking walked off the set of ER and was just like filming, just being himself. Well, no, he actually went into ER in his Batman costume. Was like, oh look, I'm Batman. Uh, he totally would. Oh yeah, he totally did. So it was oh, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so what about your your favorite Batman? My favorite Batman for the longest time was Michael Keaton's <clears throat> Batman. He was the most intimidating, way more intimidating as a thing than Christian Bale's Batman. Um, until I saw Ben Affleck's Batman and that fight scene in the warehouse, which was freaking the best Batman fight scene in cinematic history is that fight scene in Batman versus Superman at the warehouse. Mm-hmm. It was everything we've ever wanted to see in Batman. We only got to see in the Arkham games. Right. And we got to see it and we were like, ah. it's always on YouTube being watched a million times a day because it's so badass. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't. I didn't like what Batman became after that in the Justice League. He was kind of a huckster and a goofball. I didn't like that. 
But the way they showed Batman as this sort of creepy creature that the, the people were terrified of, as mm-hmm. this thing, not a human, was incredible. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, was it Justice League or was it? I think it was Batman versus Superman. In the when... beginning of Batman versus Superman, when the girls <clears throat> are in the cage and they're like, "That's it." Yeah, they're, they're just like that thing is still up there. Yeah, that was great. That's what you want from Batman. Yeah, so that's um, I would have to agree with you. Um, I really I I wish we could see more. Uh, well, we are going to see more um, of uh, Bruce uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. Ben Affleck, yeah. Oh, was so it? it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. I really I liked him as as Batman for sure. Um, I I think it also helps that it's not just a movie role for him, but he's such a diehard Batman fan. He has a bat cave at his house yeah he so <laughs> it's just he's yeah so it's like you really want somebody that kind of like understands how complicated a character like batman is and how he's been portrayed all these different times and to be able to be different and i feel like he you know i feel like Zack snyder and him got together and really created like a new batman that we're not used to seeing and that's like the skull cracking kind so (laughs) yeah that's the kind i've been reading since this you know the 70s comic books i picked up as a little kid yeah so it was it was nice to see that a different side of batman and um where he just gives no fucks um killing people whatever like he Mm -hmm. does not have that rule in this one like christopher um uh christopher nolan's batman did um so yeah i yeah, I, I agree with you right there. So definitely, hundred percent would be. Um, it is. Def- I, I like that Batman because he'll kill in the heat of battle, which is basically the same rules of um, engagement that cops and soldiers go through. So I'm not going to hate him for. It. He's not going to cold bloodedly drop, go up to a guy and drop him off a building. But if someone's throwing a grenade at you and you kick it back and they happen to blow up in the process, like that great scene. Yeah. Hey man, rules of engagement. You know, so he, he's not. A, he's still not a killer. He's not a cold blooded assassin. It's rules of engagement and let him do his thing that's what batman in he's not superman he's not about hope he's about revenge mm-hmm. um and we didn't get that from that's my biggest problem with if we're talking about the best batman that's my biggest problem with christopher nolan's batman christian bell's batman is that he was so much more about legacy than getting revenge against criminals and people who are that prey on the weak you know he was always about legacy um yeah but this one's batman's not about legacy He's about revenge, taking revenge on those who deserve it. And that is what this Batman we're seeing from Pattinson is about. He literally says, I am vengeance. Right. I just want him to add, motherfucker. <laughs> no, 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 no. That would have ruined it. Ruined, that would have ruined it. The sentiments were there. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's no. what Batman is, you know. Yeah, this is this is angry Batman. Yeah. In Robert Pattinson's version. So it's gonna be I mean, we had like uh angry Batman in um I feel like this Batman, which I'm sure this is intentional because Matt Reeves went in with Ben Affleck intending on this to be um, kind of like how Batman starts out. But yeah. um, so I really see that, you know, Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman is, you know, uh, like old Batman, not, you know, almost retired He's- Batman. And then we're going back to basics with Robert Pattinson's and. Robert Pattinson's Batman eventually ends up to Ben Affleck's Batman. God, I can't wait to see that arc over the next decade. You know, I hope Pattinson plays Batman until he's gray, you know, which is what we've needed. Hell, if if freaking Hugh Jackman can play Wolverine for almost 20 years, let Pattinson do it. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see where Robert, uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman goes. I'm I'm excited. I, the villains look dope. The just the overall look of it. Oh, we're we're getting into the new Batman. We can't do that. It's inevitable. It's okay. Yeah, because but... we again, we as fans and the writers and creators of this new Batman, they're with us. They've they've seen what works and what doesn't, and what we mm-hmm. haven't seen before. So power to them. So, what's your least favorite Batman then? My least favorite Batman is is it Christian Bale? I have. To... And it sucks because I grew up watching and I love him, but I had I still have a stuffed toy of his from when I was a little kid, and I'm now in my mid thirties, and that's Adam West Batman. Yeah, I, I I loved it as a little kid. There's a special place in my heart for it because it's it's Adam West. It's the thing I grew up with as a little kid. I still you just have don't the like toys. you don't like it's, the super campiness it's, of it. It's the least 
best of the, all the Batmans. Um, right next to him is Christian Bale's. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like really? Batman. You put George Clooney's Batman over Christian oh, Bale? Oh, okay. I forgot about that. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> You know what, I George? Mean, okay. My, I, okay, mine's George Clooney. Well, again, I didn't think that even just, worth mentioning, but yes, George it was, Clooney. It was just George Clooney. George Clooney's Batman was the worst Batman. Sorry, George Be- Clooney. Because Shouldn't all read tonight. No, it's fine. He jokes about it. The movie's terrible. So I know. It's okay. He has Oscars. He don't care. And he's yeah, not he listening fuck. to this. <laughs> but George Clooney's Batman is actually the worst um, because it didn't find that sense of self-awareness in camp like um, Adam West did. Mm-hmm. Adam West meant something to a generation, and it left a cultural footprint. George Clooney's didn't. It yeah. was just a, it wasn't a cultural footprint. It was a shit stain. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it's so, remembered for all the wrong reasons. Exactly. In, so, in, in, in infamous. Yeah. So George Clooney's Batman was the worst, including with the bat nipples. Well, that wasn't his fault. <laughs> it wasn't his fault, but it's still the worst Batman incarnation. Yeah, it is. Fucking Joel Schumacher. What? <laughs> Damn it. What about your best Gotham? Best like, Gotham is Batman Begins, unequivocally. Ooh. Unequivocally, because the the 1960s Batman was basically just the San Fernando Valley. It was it didn't look anything like Gotham was supposed. Oh to. yeah, definitely. It yeah, was California. Yeah, 1966. Yeah, the, that version was California. There was yeah, there was buildings that I'm like, I know that fucking building. Yeah, <laughs> so I can tell you where it is in California. Um, uh, but see, what they had right in in Tim Burton's Batman for the uh, his Gotham for the longest time was the best. Mm-hmm. Felt like something straight out of the Killing Joke. It was beautiful. And then we got what Christopher Nolan did with Batman Begins, which is oh, so I love this piece of trivia. He was inspired by Blade Runner. Yeah. He made the staff watch Blade Runner and said, this is the kind of movie we're going to make. Why he lost that in The Dark Knight, I don't know. Because Gotham City in Batman Begins felt like a living, breathing thing. It was a character and world all on its own. It had the best environmental feel I'd ever seen for Gotham. He forgot about that. And he was just interested in gritty realism, so The Dark Knight was just Chicago. It was literally just Chicago with Gotham PD police cars running around. That was it. It didn't feel like Gotham at all. It was just the city of Chicago. Mm. Well, oh, okay. Well, what were you going to we'll, say? We'll get there. Um, what was your favorite Gotham? I don't know. This one I kind of went back and forth on a lot just because um, I I did like – I like the original Batman, um, or not original Batman, the 1989 Batman with Michael Keaton. It was Tim Burton's version. Because it just felt gloomy and sad and hardened. I don't know. Like like it, a rotting city. Yeah, like like you said, like a rotting city. And I go back and forth between that version of Batman and Joel Schumacher's version of Batman, which is alive and grandiose it was yeah it, it's like but it it's like i go back and i you know like i've i've played the i played most of the batman games and uh tim burton's batman uh tim burton's uh gotham reminds me of those games yeah but also joel schumacher whenever i look at comics you know it's it's out of this world and it's different than anything else I've seen. Now I feel that's why I like Joel Schumacher's version because I've never seen a city look like what he used for his design as Gotham. Yeah. It was beautiful. And that was sort of metropolis inspired, you know, I mean, everything was, like you said, it was, it was huge, grandioso. And to me, it felt like it was, it was different than anything I've seen. I like Joel Schumacher's, um, Gotham City, especially in Batman Forever, because it was a nice little balance of something being grandiose, but not too cartoony like in Batman and Robin. But it was, it felt like a living, breathing, grandiose thing. Um, well, I don't like Batman Forever's version. Really? You like the Batman and Robin's Gotham better? I think I do because I have notes in here from Batman Forever where they took like the Statue of Liberty and instead of saying, like, instead of having like Statue of Liberty, it said Gotham. It was their version of the statue. And so, no, 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 no. I didn't like that. So they, they took pieces that were already well known and just yeah. renamed it to Gotham. Whereas in Batman and Robin, there was new statues that you know they just created original, right? And yeah. so I really liked, I, I really liked that. And so that's where I felt you get two different, very different versions of Gotham between Tim Burton, of course, and Joel Schumacher. But I think that's why I like Joel Schumacher's better is because it 
it was it was different and you really can't compare it to another city to me yeah so i get that but yeah so i would i would have to say um probably just overall based on overall look batman and robin what's your least favorite gotham least favorite gotham probably uh 1966 version or um or even batman or uh the dark knight rises because it just looked like new york to me it was new york and pittsburgh so, that's all it was yeah so if if i'm able to like recognize places i mean yeah you take out some buildings you know it, it still looks like new york just because you take out some of the buildings i mean the recognizable building so i find that kind of frustrating but that's why i think i like joel schumacher's version because it doesn't look like anything i've seen before i got you um my least favorite is actually because at least those felt like cities um because they were <clears throat> My least favorite Gotham City of all time will always be, and I've even felt this way as a little kid, is uh, Batman Returns. It was one giant set piece. It felt like something we oh, made yes. in college. It was horrible. It was. It was one giant set piece. And what's funny that you say that is because it, because it was a giant set piece that Michelle Pfeiffer constantly got lost on set. And would have to like call somebody to help find her <laughs> so she can find the I entrance. I can see people getting lost on the set of the original 1989 Batman with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. That it was supposedly the biggest set that Warner Brothers had ever made in their life, but it felt like a real city. Yeah, Batman Returns. It was just like a giant set piece that they kept recycling over and over again for different scenes. There was a scene when the mayor was talking in Batman Returns. It just felt like something we made in college. Yeah, and there was a horrible scene in which Penguin's at the cemetery with his folks. I swear to God, that freaking cemetery was five by ten, <laughs> and this like this. The statues looked rubber. The the what do you call that? Uh, just the gates. Everything looks so fake, fake and 100%. small. It was horrible. The worst set piece I can think of in any comic book movie in comic book movie history. The sixties was better than. Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll take that back. Yeah, Batman, uh, Batman Forever, or yeah, Batman Forever. Ret worst. No, Batman Returns. Returns. Haunted. Yeah. Jesus. With but, Catwoman. Yeah. And it sucks because there was so many things about it that worked um you know there was there was set pieces that did work like max Shrek's office uh the music worked really well with catwoman there, there were things about it that worked visually that were stunning but the sets were horrible mm -hmm. and i imagine what kind of a badass movie it would have been if they had done just two things for that movie number one give us a better set and given us a different penguin because um, I love Danny DeVito. I'll always love Danny DeVito, but we'll get to that. It's, we'll get to that. Yeah. I can tell you want to talk about him. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, do you want do you want to talk best villain now? Well, I was gonna say what's or worst your, villain? That's hard because it's like what's your what's what makes the best villain? Uh wait, do we get to the Batman costume? We'll talk about the Batman costume first. You you want to talk best. about that first? That's also, what yeah, I mean that's why I'm anxious to talk about them nipples. Dim nipples, them nips. <laughs> The pointy ass nips. Batman's always cold. Oh, and Joel Schumacher's he is fucking creep. <laughs> Can't believe the same guy. I always remember this. Maybe one of my favorite movies of all time. Not that there wasn't a kind of camp in that movie. Man. Lost Boys and Phone Booth. Two movies I fucking love. Made Batman and Robin. Um, yeah, we've, we we're never gonna forgive him for the bat nipples and the G string. Mm -hmm. Like what the hell is that? It's he had to show so much ass on those movies. Like I don't between that. And the other one. He must have um, read a lot of, like, in the 90s era, DC Comics was crazy about Dick Grayson's ass. Yeah, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, he... You went on overload on ass. Like, every time... I'm telling you, every... And I I wrote that in my notes, too. Like, are they going to show ass every time they're putting on their costumes? It's, zoom into it's that like, booty of both yes. Chris O'Donnell and George Clooney. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. But yeah, so at least we we was like okay, we also got to see Batgirl's ass, so that was like okay, wait, that's just more ass. <laughs> like, yeah, because it was like, yeah, it, it was, was like all ten ass. scenes of like George Clooney and Robin's ass. Yeah, and it's like oh, we finally get to see Batgirl's ass. There's a little bit of diversity there. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, the worst costume he is... he did not discriminate. I guess he didn't. <laughs> it was um yeah, the worst costumes were um. In my Batman opinion, and Robins. The Batman and Robins because of the nipples. If if it wasn't for that, it may not have been the worst. I hated Christopher uh, Nolan's Batman costume. It was too many pieces. It looked like just a bunch of pads. Yeah. It didn't work. I hated. I hated his voice as Batman. Hey, why are you trying to kill me? 
I can like so we're always gonna make fun of it because it was terrible, and then the costume was shit. I hated it. Um, Ooh. And the direction that they went with with um, the Batman and versus Superman, in my opinion, the best Batman costume was the one for Batman versus Superman, except for the ears. The short ears didn't work. Yeah, but the, that was uh, weird. But the cloth, like the rubber and cloth material that he wore in the padding, was straight out of the comic books, man. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a bunch of hockey pads or something. One of us made it. It looked legit. That thing was fireproof, bulletproof. Looked like something that you'd believe he could, that the person would pull off, you know. Um, so, I, favorite costume is Batman versus Superman. Least favorite. I just felt like the nipples. Batman. <laughs> I feel like Batman versus Superman's um, cost like or um, Ben Affleck's Batman's costume. I I thought that it was just bulky mm-hmm. and hard to move in. He pulled to it me. off, though. I mean, he did, but I mean, I would think that it would be like slimmer yeah. and so that way he can move fast to like fight and shit. Because if you have a whole bunch of shit weighing you down, it's yeah. hard to move in that. Yeah. And so I don't know. I didn't I didn't I didn't like the uh Ben Affleck's um suit as much as you did. Well, so you know where's the irony is you're saying it was so bulky it looked like he could move around a lot. The irony is the best fight scene of all time is with that costume. I know, I compared know compared to Christopher Nolan's Batman, which you can't see what the hell's going on. Christopher Nolan I think he, him and his brother are such good writers and he's such a good director, but I don't he doesn't know how to do fighting action well. He's damn good at at, at car chases and grandiose Oh yeah, there scenes. was there was a lot of that in there for sure. The flipping of the truck, the blowing up of the hospital, Batman on his pod, the motorcycle, that was badass. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. But when it comes to hand to hand action, Christopher Nolan's not good at it. Well, the first uh Batman Begins, um, they wanted to go for a certain aesthetic, and so they had like a lot of cut scenes during the fight scenes to make it's it look to be like messy Batman. And you can't tell what's well, going on. No, no, no. It, they wanted to make it look like, you know, Batman is super fast. And they tried to achieve that with the cut scenes. Um, because that was a note that I had in here for Batman Begins is that there's too many cut scenes during the fight scenes. And so I feel like he took a lot of direction from the studio yeah. for Batman Begins. And then whenever he, he's like, okay, let me do it. And he gets to the Dark Knight and it just blows. So, um, and the fight scenes are different. Granted, they're not as good as um, Batman vs. Superman fight scene. But um, but it's a lot better than Batman, um, Batman Begins. The fu- There's so many memorable fight scenes in 1989's um, Batman, you know. Um, yeah. I think that that one, I think Michael Keaton's uh, costume might be uh, my favorite. Just because it it looks like something that he just had to, sl- he slips on really quick and um prepared for now i get it with this day and age and um so i get why christopher nolan went with more of like a techie uh more suit and stuff like that but i like the simplicity of michael keaton's um costume uh just because you know he just had the utility belt and so that was the black the white and the utility belt and the symbol well, yeah, I, well, I, a black and yellow was the black was the symbol. Yeah, I, I I I love um, the 1989 bat suit. I think it's iconic and it's always gonna be forever remembered. Um, yeah, you know, and when it was so fun, whenever you'd rent the movie as a kid at the video store on VHS, it didn't the cover didn't need to say Batman. It didn't. All it was was the bat symbol on all the Ex- covers. Yeah, posters. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it <laughs> was it was a symbol, and it. I just I don't know I like the I like the the Michael Keaton suit more than any of the other ones. So cool. I I empathize with that. It's my second favorite. My first favorite ended up being Affleck's Batman suit. Right. With the ears, I wasn't a fan of. Not the ears. Not no, the ears. not the ears. Too close to Catwoman. All right. So worst suit we're going with uh, Mr. George Clooney again. I'm going for George Clooney. Is that what you're going with? Well, of course, George Clooney. He's just last every <laughs> everything here. What about um? He signed did, up for it. Did Val Kilmer's suit have Val Kilmer's Val Kilmer's suit? I don't remember if it had nipples, but it did have a G string, which is ridiculous, and unnecessary. Uh, he just wanted to. He just wanted to show their stuff, man. Creep, Joe Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He wanted it to have a sense of humor because I think that. I mean, after the nineteen ninety 
to Batman Returns, Batman, people that used to joke that that movie was ended with such a depressing note that little kids were jumping out of windows in the theater after watching it. Mm-hmm. So the re- his rebellious thing to do was to create something that was fun and exciting and campy and it was a little more tongue in cheek than something so dark like Batman Returns was. I like dark. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I can understand why in 1995, you got to rebel against it. And you got to give us something really action and colorful. 19, the, Batman Forever smells like the 1990s. <laughs> like as we, were, as we were watching it with the, with the gold and bold it's colors a... and the, the neon lights, I was like, yeah, this is so fucking 1995. So 90s. Uh, let's see. So now do you want to talk best about villains? The villains? Oh, it's so hard. Or, because... well, no, no, no. We'll, we'll say villains. I still have, uh, yeah, we still have a couple of stuff. What about your favorite, like, Batmobile? 1989's Batmobile. Yeah? The two-seater. Uh, it was stunning. Hmm. Um, the Ford Futura from the 1960s. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to own that shit, but. I loved all of the Bat anything in the 1966 version that shit was dope yeah like he had a so he had a car he had a motorcycle with the little thing on there that robin the said yeah the that pod. turned into a go-kart yes. <laughs> yes it turned into a go-kart uh he had a bat airplane um a bat boat yeah That's, bat boat. that was the only that was the only time we ever saw a bat boat no, we got the we so there was a bat boat in both Batman Returns when he went to chase after the penguin and in Batman was Forever there? when when Robin got blown up in the he didn't die of course, but he had to eject. Whenever Riddler and Two Face were like playing uh he sunk my battleship and then they blew up one of the mines. Oh, that's and right. Robin had to eject. That was like a forty million no, dollar bat boat like, that got blown it was up like in a fifteen sub, seconds. It was like a submarine type thing, wasn't it? Afterward it became a submarine, which is ridiculous. No. <laughs> This was like a speedboat, a bad speedboat. Yeah, okay. But yeah, still a boat. He's still a boat. I don't know. I thought it was awesome. I don't know. The all of those, I mean, they just I feel like they just put out all the stops in the nineteen sixty six version. We're gonna have all the villains in one movie. We're gonna have all the Batmobile everything in this movie. Like I don't know. Yeah, I, I just I just had a good time watching that movie. Visually the sexiest was the nineteen eighty nine um Batmobile. But mm. when it comes to being just badass, um, I will give it to the Dark Knight's Tumblr. Because that thing was a tank. It was a race car, basically, tank. Uh, mm, I didn't like it. You didn't like that one? My favorite is um, uh, the motorcycle from the uh, Chris Nolan's Batman. It's the one the that... Bat pod. Hmm? Uh, the Bat Pod, basically. It ejects out of the Batmobile, and he's able to ride it through the mall and shit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, because that thing, whenever it turns, like, the wheel turns. so You're able to move side to side. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Whenever I saw that, I was like, that is so badass. It's something we usually only uh, see in anime, so it's pretty badass that they pulled it off in that movie. It was believable. Yeah, it was. I thought it was dope as hell whenever I saw that. That's, like, my favorite thing whenever that, whenever that, uh that scene's coming up i'm like oh here it is because i still just get blown away by it each time because it's so cool <laughs> i don't know why i know it's probably not that cool but i think it's pretty damn no, it's cool badass everyone in the theater was like damn so but yeah that's my that's my favorite batmobile so yours is a, cool. yours is a the 1989 tumbler. Tumbler. no 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 um oh no christopher nolan's tumbler christopher nolan's tumbler is the best thing in all of them i think all right what and what did you like about because it? it was just it's the toughest it's the most versatile like you you would believe that thing can go through buildings Oh yeah, it did go through buildings. It did, yeah. So that that was my favorite. It's it's the toughest, therefore uh, my my favorite. All right, dope. Sound choice, sound choice. What about your favorite Alfred? You said sound choice. <laughs> what did you mean by that first? Sound choice. Yes, you said sound. Oh, I see what you're no. saying. You're saying what I said was the sound choice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so hard. No, Michael Keaton. Michael, not Michael. Michael Caine. Michael Michael Listen, Caine was the Mike, best Michael Caine took no shit from from uh Christian Bale's Batman. He lectured. He might have sound like he was nagging too much, but he's like, "Oh, your father would be disappointed." He just gave no shits and he would put him in his place. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing this. Like he wasn't just like he was a butler. He was a sassy butler. He was he, his dad. Like he told him you need to get your shit together oh you're getting out of bed today 
you know, oh, we're doing this today. Oh, you have company. And he had sass. Oh. He kept Bruce in his place like we saw in the comic books. And and I think that Michael Coff's Batman, I love Michael Coff. He's such a great actor, but he, thanks to Tim Burton and the writing, he wasn't given a lot of dimension. Um, we needed an Alfred with more dimension for this generation, and we really got it with this Alfred. Well, even um, – oh, what's it? From Batman and Superman. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy I Irons. Jeremy Irons. It was great. This was – yeah, this was a really cool one too because we got to see – we actually got to see him being tech, techy, but we also – like Michael Cloth, like he – we knew that he did stuff, but we never saw him really in the Batcave a lot and like looking stuff up, researching, as we did with Jeremy Irons. So – but still, Michael Caine is my favorite. He is. I, I'd love to see more of Jeremy Irons' Alfred because he was badass. He had so many good lines and scenes. Um, and he, he called Bruce out on his shit too. You know, I, I said that Christian Bale's the best um, Bruce Wayne. And there was a part of me that whether it's his fault or not, I couldn't get past Ben Affleck being Ben Affleck for his Bruce Wayne. But there was one great scene in which he – is Bruce Wayne from the books when he says, if there's a 1% chance that Superman is a dangerous to this world, we can kill everyone, we have to kill him. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Batman. I mean, this guy, he's cold-hearted, and he, he's going to do what he has to to accomplish his mission, whether you think it's right or wrong. And then there's Alfred, just like the books, calling him out on his shit. He's like, mm -hmm. you want to go to war with this son of a bitch? He's not our enemy. That Alfred, too, was willing to call Bruce out on his shit. You don't have an, an enemy unless you go looking for one. Yeah, and that's <laughs> exactly what... what um, Jeremy Irons, Batman, was – he would yell at him. He would call him out on his shit to say the least. Yeah. So he was probably the toughest Alfred. He may – if we see him in future films, he may end up being the best I Alfred. Don't, I, I don't know. But I don't right know. Now, it's going it to be It's gonna be interesting seeing um, – oh, It's going to be weird seeing fucking Gollum as, as Alfred. But all right. you know, I love he's, him. He's, he's been more than Gollum. I know he has because he's Rude. such an amazing character actor. He can be Gollum. He can be a Planet of the Apes monkey he, he's done so much yeah he was in uh avengers. avengers as a villain so he's an amazing character actor so i'm just speaking facetiously but i don't know i we haven't even seen him in the trailer i know andy circus and i love andy circus i think he's one of the best character actors one of the most underrated we have um, oh he's brilliant but i don't know yet that's yet to be determined um right now the best we can say with certitude is michael kane's alfred because he was given the most dimension, the best oh, lines. You, yeah, are you, so you're agreeing with me? I'm agreeing with you. I have yeah. to. Yeah. Because Michael Caine, Michael Caine just had that sass, and I I love a character that's going to keep Batman accountable. Because if there is a, if there's one character that will keep him accountable, it's Alfred. Yeah. And Michael Caine's Alfred was the one that kind of stood up to him and told him, "Hey, you're you're being dumb. Batman has already lived it, lived his legacy. Like." You need to live. You you need to live yours. Like yeah. you need to live Bruce Wayne's legacy, because you're killing your father's legacy in the process of yeah. you building up Batman's legacy. People were crying Fucking in the audience it. at the, and I had so many qualms with this movie of uh, the Dark Knight Rises. But people were crying in the audience when he saw Alfred crying, looking at the grave of Bruce Wayne. He thought he was dead. Right. He's like, I'm sorry, I failed you. And he's talking to the graves of Martha and Thomas Ugh. Wayne. It's such a great scene. So sad. Yeah. Maybe he's. It's Michael Caine. He's fucking awesome. I love Michael Caine. He can yeah. be so funny and shit like Dirty Rotten Scoundrels or the third Austin Powers movie. Mm -hmm. He can also make you cry like in The Dark Knight Rises. He's, yeah. Yes, of course Great. he's the best, Alfred. All right. That's what I thought. All right. So now I'll, I'll hand this over to you. No. Yeah. You've been wanting to talk about it. Best and worst villain. <sighs> The worst, and that sucks because I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. I fucking love Arnold. Are you really calling his, like, Mr. Freeze the worst villain? Yeah. Even though I absolutely love Arnold Schwarzenegger, I grew up watching him, and I'll always stand Arnold Schwarzenegger. Him and Uma Thurman's villains were the worst. Well, <gasps> Uma Thurman is not the worst. Uma, Uma Thurman is amazing because she's Uma Thurman and it's she's fun to look at and listen to as Poison Ivy arguably probably the best looking Batman villain of all time even more than Michelle Pfeiffer in a cat suit which mm. really says something wrong but I just think that 
And it wasn't their fault as actors. I don't fault them as actors, but they were, had the worst lines, the worst acting because of the directing. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Ooh, You're that. wrong on all accounts. They were the worst villains because they were in the worst movie. And, they, uh, and No. It, maybe maybe the worst villain was Tommy Lee Jones and um, Jim Carrey's villain. People would say that, and I empathize with why people might feel that way. But for yes. 1995... I have a whole thing about villains, so I'll let you. I'll I'll, I'll stop interjecting. They were so the I'll worst because they were in the worst movie. They were given the best lines. They had the best, the worst acting because of Joel Schumacher's directing. It wasn't the actor's fault, but they were the worst villains that we've ever seen in any of the movies. You can defend Jim Carrey's Riddler was funny and psychotic and worked for 1995. The villains in the 1960s worked for the 1960s. Tommy Lee Jones's Two Face was the two-face we needed for 1995's Joel Schumacher's Batman. So he technically, while well, I know people had issues with them because he played it too much like the fucking Joker, it, they weren't the worst. Technically, I think that Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy were the worst villains. You, in, I am looking at your face. People at home can't see your face, but you, you're quite indignant over my choice. Why do I you am very that? indignant. Okay, first you off, like that movie. First off, the worst villain was Penguin. Really? Absolutely. I hate, hate Batman Returns because of Penguin. I just can't watch it. Like, I don't. Because he's so gross? Which, what was your. What... It, because it's gross. It's gross. It, it doesn't fit Penguin. And it makes me kind of like. It, it, I feel like they kind of like dumbed it, dumbed Penguin down. To make him seem like, oh, he's penguin, so he's got to be penguin like, and he's, you know, eating fish and being grotesque. And whenever um, Cobblepots is a businessman, like he has, like, he's like a mob dude, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. smart. And I feel like they dumped him down for this role, and it really pissed me off, you know, the more I was looking into it. It's Tim, it's Tim <sighs> Burton's penguin was gross and unnecessary. And it really sucks, too, because we could have seen. Because Danny DeVito is so fucking brilliant and but, funny. He, I mean, he, it, he, in it, go ahead. Go ahead his sorry. non-gross – Danny DeVito's non-gross penguin would have been amazing. Exactly. And that's what makes me mad. You got the perfect person that can play Cobble Pie, Cobble Pie yeah. penguin and without him being a nasty vil, like a, a nasty character, like grotesque, gross character. He could have pulled it off. And it's so funny. Because a smart version of – penguin which is how he's portrayed in the comics he's incredibly intelligent in the comic books he he's outwitted batman you read yeah but like, it's it but that's my thing so 100 percent, it has nothing to do with danny devito danny devito played so well what tim burton wanted yeah he did. that that is what grotesque me so much and it just kind of made me yeah. it kind of made me mad uh, which I'm so mad about. I think 100% worst villain is Penguin. Is that version of Penguin because it wasn't necessary. Because you had Michelle Pfeiffer playing Catwoman. And she played Catwoman so well. And so, like, she was cat-like. But, and I mean, even hers. Like, she's, you know, drinking milk, whatever. There was but some camp to her was, Catwoman, but at the same time. It wasn't overdone yeah. like Penguin was. And I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer playing Catwoman, absolutely brilliant. I love the portrayal of her Catwoman, and she's she's just kind of going off and doing her own thing, and then you know struggling with her real life self. And there's a a scene in Batman Forever where they go Batman Returns. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Batman Returns. They go into a um, her and Bruce are in a party. Um, and everybody's wearing masks, and them two are the only two that don't have masks. It's and I mean, scene. it's and it's a smart movie. Batman, Re like Batman Returns, is a smart movie. I just don't under, I don't, I feel like Penguin is so out of place in this whole movie, and when it could have been completely elevated if they would have portrayed a different version of Penguin. And I feel like because of that, it just throws the whole movie off, throws the whole vibe off for me. But 
there were smart moments in Batman Returns. There's there's acting from Danny DeVito in this movie that if it was a different movie, he would have gotten some some nods for acting. Not an Oscar certainly, but he would have gotten some nods. There was a scene at the ending when he talked about the liberation of Gotham has begun, and he's screaming. And there are scenes where he's being really funny. And it sucks too because it's, you're right. I mean, he's given some good lines. Like whenever that they're at that party of Max Shrek's office, and it, he blows the place up, and he says. You didn't invite me, so I crashed. That sounds like something right. Burgess Meredith Penguins would have said because he was such a little funny smartass. Yeah, and that's what makes it. And, you know, <sighs> Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, she's... She's psychotic. She's psychotic, but she's, she's the essence of a cat, whereas Penguin, they made him like a penguin. Too much. He was too literal. And I don't know why they couldn't parallel those villains to kind of like heightened like what they were portrayed to be. But it, I did, uh, it, it was like, you know, Hey, we're going to give you these two characters. They could be the same, but we're going to make one super gross just because we can. I just don't understand it. I think Tim Burton was worried about Cobblepot from the comic books, not being dark enough for this universe he had created. And so that's why he chose to make them necessarily so freaking gross um yeah there were scenes where if, if you want to have cobble pot groping someone or having some sexual innuendo things he was an arrogant little prick so that's fine oh, that was gross but, there, but the scenes with him having like eating the fish and he's walking down the stairs in that fat suit where he looks like he shit himself like yes that was another <laughs> thing it always looked like He's been soiled for months and hadn't taken a bath. Right, yeah. That's Hated something that. that Cobble Pot would never be Hated like. Hated it. Oh, gross. Yeah, and again, it's it's frustrating because, as you said, it's Danny DeVito, which if, if he would have been given the chance to play a penguin that was closer to the comic books, he would have been one of the most memorable villains of that decade. Yeah. But instead, we're just grossed out by him most of the fucking time. Exactly. Oh. Um, but that's 100% my least favorite um, villain. But my... My favorite villain is, of course, it's um, Heath Ledger's Joker. Um, I'm just not going to go into it very much just because it's – he is so unlike himself. Like, he obviously got lost in that part. And he is just so unlike any character. Um, we have – ever seen in any type of movie like a psychopath and what what i found interesting is any anytime somebody called him crazy or a psychopath or whatever he was like genuinely offended yeah that's one thing that no one's ever talked about that nuance before at least i haven't caught it that whenever because so many people would imitate heath ledger's joker and they do it on an obnoxious level but if you've actually watched the movie more than a few times you realize that in his mind he's he's not psychotic he um he basically like that that scene that you were that you pointed out to me i never noticed before that was brilliant was never he's at the meeting and ever that one of the the gangsters says to him you're crazy and he goes no i'm not like he just genuinely offended that, that's what i'm saying yeah and it's he's like i have a philosophy motherfuckers you're just not understanding it right and you know joker is you know everybody everybody knows joker as like this crazy and um you 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 don't know what's gonna happen you don't know where he's going you don't know what he's thinking he's random um you know does whatever joker wants but i feel like heath ledger's joker was calculated and always a step ahead of everybody yeah and he found control in chaos because he controlled that situation and so it's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's that. And I think that's why I just, you know, and that's a that's part two of the writing of, uh, you know, Christopher and Jonathan Nolan, as well as writing him that way. But there's just little nuances that I've found watching The Dark Knight again. And I'm just like, God, it's just it is joke. Hey, that Joker is just so completely brilliant. And. <sighs> I don't. I just can't. I don't want to keep going on about it because everybody goes on about about Heath Ledger's Joker. Um, it was a. You want to talk about something that had a cultural footprint for a generation? 
His Joker did, man, in ways that no other villain that we can think of in comic book history. Well, even in comic book history. But I mean, like in cinema comic book history. Cinema comic book history, but also he set a precedence that, you know, he set a bar where Jack Nicholson also set a bar playing Joker. But Jack, Jack Nicholson, this is the first time, well, not the first time, but this is a new era of whenever they're doing Batman. And so he was just having a good old time on set doing the Joker. And that really came across. And he was a great Joker, don't get me wrong. But he's a camp Joker. He's camp, plays jokes, you know. He had that laugh, man. Oh, that yeah, the was, laugh was great. People make fun of, like, after Heath Ledger's Joker, people wanted to shit on J Nicholson's Joker because he said, oh, he was just goofy. If you actually watch the movie, rewatch it, watch it on Blu-ray right now. And pay close attention to the nuances of his performance. He was brilliant in his own way. Mm -hmm. There was that scene wherever he was, uh, he had just basically slaughtered his mob boss by electrocuting him to death. And he had said, uh, you know, I I'm glad you're dead. And he just walks away laughing. He goes, I'm glad you're dead. He has so many little pieces of that performance that just felt so real. Like, man, how is this guy's fucking acting? Like, this guy seems genuinely psychotic. Um, and now people will criticize it and say, well, that's just Jack Nicholson being Jack Nicholson. No, it's not. I mean, he, he invented and created this. Oh, so you're Joker. disagreeing with me? Uh, that's no, what I said. No, I mean, I, 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 I have to concede that the best villain probably was no one's Joker just because I have to, because logic dictates that's true. Well, I mean, you can disagree with that if you want to. I can't. That's the thing is I, I, I agree. It's one of those things where, I mean, you look at it as a whole, all eight movies we watched, um, and there were so many good things about a lot of them. I loved Scarecrow, the portrayal mm -hmm. that we got in this movie we didn't get to see before. Well, before you start going to the other villains, you disagreed with me on Jack Nicholson's Joker. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm agreeing with you that Heath Ledger's Joker was the best villain we'd ever seen, probably the best Joker we'd ever seen. But I, I want to stand the shit out of Jack Nicholson's Joker because if you, like I said, if you rewatch it, man, you'll see some nuances in the performance that are fucking brilliant. They didn't just work in 1989. You watch it right now and it still works. Oh yeah, it does. But I, I, well, I said that it's Jack Nicholson being Jack Nicholson, which is I don't having fun. That. So, okay. That's what I'm, that's why yeah. I wanted to bring it back to. I think, you know, because we can't really go off of the 1966 Batman because that one is just like pure camp, pure fun. You I know, love whatever. Cesar Romero too, man. But he was good for the time. Yeah, he was he was good. And this one I still feel was, um, I don't know, it it wasn't, well, it wasn't really scary to me. Well, like Bat, or not Batman, I'm sorry. Um, Joker didn't really come off as threatening. That's probably not the right word. Um, he wasn't as dangerous because, again, Heath Ledger's Joker was 10 steps ahead of everyone. Jack Nicholson's wasn't. He was impulsive. Impulse, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I He agree wasn't with... a tactician like the fucking... Right. That's, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect thing to go off of, yeah, because um, he was very impulse-based, which... Now, a criticism of Christopher Nolan's Joker was that he was almost magic. He did a lot of shit in that movie that would not work, and that was kind of dumb. Like the scene whenever he has that bomb in that guy at the police station, he presses the button. All the cops just kind of faint after that explosion. Like they're all gotten rid of, and he's able to get away so easily. That was bullshit. And the scene at the very end, which all of us in the audience had a problem with when I saw it in 2008, was whenever he put the bombs in the boats. Yeah. And like the crew goes down there. Oh, there's a bunch of TNT down there that's set to blow. And I'm like, why the f you guys didn't see that before? You couldn't include a scene, Christopher Nolan, of them jamming a door open. Like they couldn't go down there and notice to begin with. No one noticed all that fucking bombs down there until someone found the, yeah, the but detonator. That's, but that's not on Joker. That's on just it's on the, the writing. writing. That's what I'm saying. So but. that for that reason, blame it on the writing. That portrayal of Joker, that's one of the issues I had with him is he was too um Ahead of everyone. There was there were yeah. scenes in it that was because of some bad writing that made it too unbelievable at times. So what about since you know, are so we're both saying Heath Ledger as the best one. What's what about your second favorite villain? Since I think a lot of people would concede that Heath Ledger's Joker is one of the better villains, but I'm curious to know your second favorite villain. My second favorite villain is Jack Nicholson's Joker because his presence on really? screen was always fun he was a little scary at times whenever he goes into vicky vale's apartment you don't know what when we were watching that for the first time as a kid you don't know what he's gonna do is he gonna kill her is he yeah. gonna kill him the hell is he capable of so he's probably my second favorite 
I also really loved um, Scarecrow. I think that it was funny how he became – he was such an important villain on the first one. And then on two, two and three, he just kind of popped up and made a little high cameo. Yeah. You know, he was kind of misused in two or three. Um, he just became like a little secondary pop up villain that wasn't that important. And I don't know. I like seeing him pop up like randomly in the third one. In the third one, I didn't mind, but in the second one, he just sort of shows up as a villain. Batman sort of hog ties him and leaves him there for the cops. It's like, really? That's all we get from Scarecrow this time? Yeah. It's such... like they, they had to finish it from the first movie. But it was dumb. Yeah. But I, I really loved his Scarecrow. Um, I loved Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. She was sort of an anti villain. I love Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Loved um, it. The, the Two Face and, and this and Riddler's they were they were they were campy characters. They weren't they didn't even feel like villains in that one. I mean, my problem with um with Two Face the uh, Two Face and uh, Riddler from Batman uh, Returns is I felt or Batman Forever. Jesus, can't get them all straight. Um, my problem with them is that to me, they both were trying to come off like the Joker, a crazy laugh, really outlandish. Um, he was written and directed like the Joker with two faces. Well, yeah, both of them. I feel like both of them were. Now, what, and Riddler? And Riddler. No, yeah. Riddler was just Jim Carrey. You know? It was. <laughs> but again, I feel, I mean, they make him look, um... They make him look, um, they started off, you know, really smart, but, but crazy, but it was after he became Riddler, it was, you know, it, it felt very Joker like with a Riddler costume. So it was like a, the, the most goofiest Joker you could imagine. Right. So yeah, it was cartoony. So I just, I thought that those, it, it reminded me too much of how, like the Joker, if it was campy, would be portrayed. Yeah. So that's why I didn't like those two villains. Um, I want to get to what I disagree with you on. People want to just most people probably agree with you. You like to shit on uh, Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. You didn't like her. No. Why didn't you like her? Of course, Michelle Pfeiffer's was better. No, but... no, I'm not even comparing her to that. Um, I don't know. I just feel. I just feel like Michelle Pfeiffer had this mystery and like sexiness and she just like went through some shit before in order to become Catwoman. And, you know, this, their Catwomans are different, you know, um, this cat, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman is based off of, you know, um, cats bringing her back to life, and so then she becomes a villain. That's very interesting. That's the only time we saw something implicitly paranormal in any of the Batman movies. Yeah, and then you have Anne Hathaway's Catwoman, where she is, um, you know, she's a thief, which is coincides mostly with what the um, comic books have. But I just, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't connect with her. Mm -hmm. I just feel like she tried to come off mysterious and sexy and um, she kind of tried to um, she kind of tried to saunter around like Michelle Pfeiffer did, but it just never really worked for her. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's I've every time I watch uh, the dark Knight rises, I, I think about it still. I'm just like, I don't know. She she just doesn't have and I mean I love Anne Hathaway as an actress. Whenever she was casted as Catwoman, I was really excited about it. I I was like, "Oh, I'm so ready to see this." But after watching it, I was just like it just wasn't there for me. She just didn't have this I don't know. It it just something just did not connect with me um with Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. I wanted to love her so much. I just didn't Probably she feel it. She I will concede she wasn't Catwoman. <laughs> She's not the Selena Kyle that I grew up reading and you've come to really like, especially under Tom King's Catwoman. Um, but, I mean, she was basically a version of Selena Kyle in a cat burglar costume. She wasn't Catwoman from the books. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so I, and now I realize my defense of her is because I love Anne Hathaway. And I love what she was. I love what she did with, with what she was given. It wasn't her fault that they didn't call her Catwoman through the entire movie. She didn't have any cat. That's a superficial criticism. She wasn't called Catwoman. She didn't have the cat ears. Costume was a little too far away from the comic book. So that's a superficial criticism. I think the more intricate criticism is she wasn't Catwoman personality wise. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just didn't connect with it. I didn't connect with her. So there was, know. she had some good moments. One of my favorite scenes is whenever she's screaming in the bar, she's at the line. She's one of the victims. She yeah. That, starts, that part was great. She was just screaming hysterically. And then she just snaps out of it. Right. That so, was great. That was, that was a great scene. And, but still, I overall performance, and even whenever she was in the cast suit, I was just like, I don't know. It felt like someone in a badass Catburger costume. It didn't feel like Catwoman. Well, and it was the relationship between her and um, Bruce just kind of felt not like forced, but it just like happened all of a sudden. Because you have, during the whole movie, you have Bruce going after... Um, uh, Marianne Cotillard's character. Um, I don't remember what they called that her, felt but a little forced to me. But yeah, she's Talia. But um, it was Miranda. Did they call her Miranda? That was yeah, her name. But um, but yeah, but then you have her going. You have Bruce going after her. But then it was like at the very end before she's Calvin's about to take off and leave everybody there. Like she's getting out of town. You know, then she's like, Bruce, come with me. I'm just like, Shh. You're about to ditch his ass. Like, get the hell out what, of what the fuck? <laughs> like, I would, I would almost believe it if at the very first scene, whenever she's trying to break into a safe, that she kind of just like, you know, tempts him a little bit and, you know, kind of like I mean, leads him on a little bit. But it was hardly anything. I mean, they did have interactions throughout the whole thing. She does tell him in that one scene before she threatens to take off. She's just like, come with me. You don't owe these people anything. I did like that a lot. Yeah, but I don't know. I just – I didn't connect with it. I had more of a problem with Tom Hardy's Bane than I did um, her Catwoman, even though, I, again, I'd had my issues with her being Catwoman. Right. No, I did have a note about um, Tom Hardy's Bane um, in Dark Knight Rises. So, you know, the very first scene, it opens up in an airplane, and um, they have, like, three or four captives, and they're just like, one of these men are Bane and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, Bane's supposed to be huge. He's supposed to be huge. Wouldn't you have known if you would have captured Bane? Like, why are you, you have three or four people. How do you not know that one of them's Bane? Right. There's a reason why, even though I'm not, I'm not crazy about somebody who isn't Hispanic or half Hispanic playing Bane. I will totally stand Batista playing that motherfucker because I, number one, I love Dave Batista. Number two, he looks and sounds as physically exactly what we want from Bane. Bane shouldn't be my size. And Tom Hardy was in that plane well, saying he didn't even look big. Well, it that, and they shot. Whenever um, it had Bane's scene specifically, Christopher Nolan shot him, you know, f further down, like closer to the floor, look, having he camera up cool to tricks, make yeah. to make him look taller, which I get is a camera trick or whatever, you know, and Tom Hardy had to wear platform shoes. But it I'm just like that kind of pissed me off at the beginning. I'm just like, really? Do you not know how to portray somebody who's really cool, scary and articulate without the British accent? Because that really got on my goddamn oh, nerves. Yeah. Because, uh, no one who could have before I put on the mask. Because, like, is this Bane <laughs> or fucking Sean Connery? Like, it this. was perfect. I'm telling you. It's like, mm -hmm. this was so obnoxious. Fuck you, Christopher Nolan, for not knowing how to give us a Bane with a, with mm -hmm. a Hispanic or Caribbean accent. I was born into the dark. I was born into the dark. It's like, <laughs> why are you. Just like fucking Tom Hardy got drunk, watched Highlander 1 and 2 with Sean Connery, and decided, ah, that's how I'm going to fucking do it. Why not? Uh, he played a guy named Ramirez, and uh, he did it with a Scottish accent. I can do it with a British one straight out of downtown Abbey. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest problem with that Bane is it wasn't fucking Bane. It was it was a guy with a British accent who was pretty intelligent who could fight. Cool. But it wasn't Bane. It was not Bane. It was not Bane at all. No. I just, it's, I, again, it's, 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 I love Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. I fucking love Tom Hardy. He was Same. just miscasted in that role. He was misdirected. Bane had some good lines. Um, I'm glad you remember that he was supposed to be big, but that wasn't Bane. 
Right. You know, this this British boy. Well, why the fuck did he have such a British accent if he was born and raised in hell on earth, which is someplace in implicitly Tibet or the Middle East? Right. You would almost expect him to have a, a um, Hispanic accent with a little bit of like Arabic or something because something. of where they were. Yeah, because in the comic books. It, was, it, it almost should have been like an accent that you can't detect where it's from. Exactly. Something ambiguous, not specifically so British. Mm-hmm. Um, he sounded like a villain from, <laughs> let's say, Doctor Who or some BBC show. Didn't sound like Bane. In the comic books, the uh, place where Bane's from is supposed to be um, off the coast of South America, close to the Caribbean. And in the movie, it was implied it was somewhere in the Middle East. We didn't get either of those accents, which made no fucking sense. Yeah. Um, what about, um, let's see, are we, are we miss- what do you think about the villains from the 1966 Batman? They were fun. They were camp. Um, Riddler yeah. was really annoying. Um, <laughs> the actor's great who played him, but he was really obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> like, what about that uh, Catwoman? Uh, Lee Merriweather. Lee Merriweather was absolutely hands down probably the most beautiful looking Catwoman of all time. But she was gorgeous. I wrote that. that's in my notes. She too. was either Miss America or Miss Universe. She was literally a pageant contestant. Yeah, I literally said Lee Merriweather is gorgeous and underlined exclamation point. <laughs> she was ridiculously beautiful. Yeah, hundred you know, um, percent. But she wasn't believable as Catwoman. She was too wholesome. She looked like the girl next door i don't know nine thirty. no nah, i loved her catwoman too she was fun she was fun she just wasn't my favorite my favorite catwoman um of all time is still gonna be um michelle pfeiffer no believe it or not it's still gonna be um julie newmar oh okay julie newmar had the height the voice mm-hmm. the funniness the sexiness and you believe that you know what she's kind of off she might kill you yeah you know, mm-hmm. she might. I love Eartha Kitt's Catwoman because she was more dangerous. She played her, you know, in meaner. Yeah. You believe she'd absolutely kill you. But Julie Newmar's Catwoman, you weren't sure. What do you think of, uh, how do you think that Zoe, uh, Zoe Kravitz looks so far from the trailer? We've only seen her with a fucking robber mask. I have no idea. Yeah. I. It's, it's just, we saw her eyes. That's it. Yeah. I'm excited to see how she does, though. I don't know how this Batman's going to go. I have my hopes up, but. The, I do, I do want to say this because I don't think we talked about it in our trailer review is that. We've seen so many different versions of Batman that this is the first time where we're kind of seeing him really raw. Um, I feel like the closest that we got to that was Chris, uh, Christian. Um, Chris, uh, ben yeah. Affleck's Batman? And- no, 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 no. Um, Christopher Nolan's Batman. But Christian Bale. I, Christopher Christopher, and Christian. I'm getting mixed up. And so that's where I'm I'm dropping the ball here. I don't know but, if he was that raw and gritty. Christi- see, well, was- well, let me finish. So Chris, uh, Christian Bale, we see him. Um, oh, I don't remember. Um, I think I think it was in Asia somewhere where he is um, in prison. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's just beating dudes up. And that's whenever Liam Neeson finds him and, you know, indoctrinates him into the League of Shadows. So I feel like that's the closest that we've gotten of you know, Batman before he became Batman. But this one, we haven't really seen a lot of the detective side and how he kind of figures things out. So, you know, kudos to what they're doing because uh, Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's Batman, because like I said, we have so many versions of these Batmans right now. Like we have what we have. um, We have Michael Keaton. We have Adam West. We have uh, Christian Bale. Uh, Val Kimmer, George Clooney. Um, am I missing anybody else? Um, we have all these different yeah, versions. Adam West, yeah, everybody. Yeah. So we have all these different versions of Batman, and they still manage to figure out a way to make it different. So that's that's all I wanted to say. So I'm excited to see where it goes and see the detective side of things. I'm hoping we get a balance because my biggest problem with – I liked – I love Batman Begins. I'm always going to love that movie. And we got to see a gritty Batman or a gritty Bruce Wayne with those scenes, like you said, where he's basically in prison and he tells one of the prisoners, you're just practice. Mm -hmm. Um, So we got to see some grit there. The problem is that in Batman The Dark Knight, um, we got to see him being a detective too. Okay, awesome. The grittiness wasn't there. This Batman was a real Boy Scout in in The Dark Knight. Well, in Batman... In the Dark Knight, he already has everything, and you know he has all the texts and gadgets and stuff like that. I I don't know. It but, doesn't look like this Batman has all that stuff. No, he's still working on it. This yeah. is year one or year two, Batman. I heard. Um, yeah. 
So I, I'm hoping we get the best of both worlds with Robert Pattinson's Batman, where we get to see the grittiness of his character and how he's mentally fucked up, but we also get to see that detective work of what he's capable of. That's why right. people love the character of Batman, because he is screwed up. He doesn't have powers. He doesn't have powers. He's a gritty fighter. He's a men- He's emotionally completely fucked up, but he's also brilliant. Right. You know, that's the fun of that character. And I hope we really get that with, with Robert Pattinson's Batman. And we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. So uh, let's see. So let's let's get to our – what is your favorite Batman movie? Of all of them? Uh, out of all of them. What's yours? My favorite Batman movie? Yeah. Dark Knight. Really? Mm-hmm. The Dark Knight, to me, had the best script. Um. So did Batman Begins. Um, I feel like The Dark Knight had the best flow. And, oh, we didn't even talk about um, Aaron Eckhart's Two-Face. That's my second favorite villain. I feel like... the He's tied with me with Jack Nicholson's Joker as the second best. The flow of that movie, I feel like all the pieces were there. I didn't like Batman Begins because it was really choppy and um really choppy it felt really rushed and i don't like i didn't like katie holmes i just feel like she She was misplaced she was very misplaced and whenever they got you know maggie jill and hall aaron eckhart i feel like the movie just kind of elevated because you have these actors and actresses who you know are known to be in um you know bigger budget movies that have great acting careers, they're award winners, things like that. So I feel like it just elevated it even more. And on top of that, you get, you know, Christopher and Jonathan Nolan's writing and the flow of it, the pacing, the the climax of everything was so good. I mean, you almost forget that it's a comic book movie. Yeah. It's it's on a con it's a comic book movie on a whole nother level. You that's a movie that it doesn't have to be camp. It can be serious and it can still be a Oscar worthy movie or have Oscar worthy performances. Yeah. And I feel like that is what set the level for comic book movies. A hundred percent that came out after that. Like, um, like you have Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. That one totally took the dark Knight, took notes from that. And said, okay, you know, if the Dark Knight did it, we need to be on that same level. And yeah. they did. It took itself seriously when it comes to the directing, writing, and acting. It decided we're going to make a grown-up movie. Um, and I think it's really hard for me to say which one is my favorite is. Because I, I will concede that the Dark Knight, writing-wise, is the best Batman movie. I will concede that. But I had so many issues with it, so it's frustrating because I had issues with his he, voice. I had mm-hmm. issues with. I didn't mind his voice so much. I had a major issues with the bat suit. Um, I had major issues with the third act and some of the unbelievable stuff the Joker is able to pull off. Um, so I have issues with that movie, but I will concede, writing wise, it's probably the best Batman movie that they've made so far. Um, but when it comes to just the one that I can watch repeatedly. There's just something about the 1989 Batman movie that's always going to resonate with me. And people are going to say, well, it's because you're biased, Miguel. You grew up watching that on HBO. I mean, I did. But it just had such a great balance in terms of how Gotham looked. Batman's suit, Batman's voice, the intimidating presence of Batman, um, the villain, you know, the attention to detail artistically. There, yeah. That's do I concede that writing wise, the dark Knight's the best? Yes. My personal favorite is always going to be the 1989 Tim Burton's Batman. Well, and I feel like Tim Burton back in 1989 was a great choice to make the first Batman movie Yeah, because that is, that is Tim Burton's aesthetic man. Yeah. And I feel like he was able to, at that time, take a script and, um, take a concept and make it completely his own, but still true to that character's form. You know, he can't really, we can't really say that for now for his past movies that have come out, but that's a whole different podcast. So. No, I, I am so about <laughs> doing a podcast just shitting on Tim Burton for the past 10 years. I'm, no, I'm totally for that. Um, but see, anyway. it pisses me off more because it's like he didn't carry that over that 
respectability towards comic books on the second Batman like he did in the first one. Right. You know, he didn't – I feel like he was collecting a check in the second one. I don't know. Well, what about what what about your least favorite? Batman and Robin? Probably Batman and Robin. Oh, how dare you. I don't know. I re- you, we rewatched it for this, and I'm, I was reminded of how fucking cringe it was. Yeah. Um, oh, so I don't bad, know. man. Batman Returns is probably my least favorite. Just because of Penguin. Just because of Penguin. Because of Penguin. If it had been a different Penguin, would you have felt that it wasn't the worst? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then it definitely would have been, um, I don't know, Batman Forever or oh. Batman and Robin. Batman for I'll stand Batman Forever because, yes, Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face was horrible. Jim Carrey's Riddler was funny but remarkably obnoxious at times. But I don't know, thirsty ass Nicole Kidman. Oh, and, that was fun. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I just could not get over it. I'm just like, dang girl, you don't you? Oh man, thirst just, was real. Like you watch it now in 2020, because we at the time it was, it was 1990s. It's okay to have the female love interest be that kind of thirsty. But you watch it now in 2020, it's like, damn, oh, she's thirsty, thirsty as shit. I mean, she's the epitome of WAP back in 1995. <laughs> Like, Damn. like any time Batman came around, it's just whop. Like, Bloodgates, man. You know, like it, no, no. She literally ma'am. turned on. She turned on the bass signal for a booty call. She did. She's sure as fuck. Like did, man. what the f- girl? And she was on the rooftop in lingerie and a robe. Mm-hmm. Damn. She was ready for it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh man. And then, and then, whenever she got, of course, of course, she's like, that bitch, and she's like, oh, I've met someone else. You no, know, as soon as she thought that. Uh, Batman was going to jump for bones the second I've met someone. And he had to pretend like he was all butthurt. And, right. <laughs> he had to pretend he's all butthurt. But wouldn't, it be, it wouldn't, wouldn't that have been some shit if, you know, Bruce would have came around and he's trying to, like, put the same game. Like, oh, I met someone else. Bitch. Now, who the fuck is it? Alfred? What the fuck? <laughs> you turn down both of us now, bitch? <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. Damn, it's Gordon. Old <laughs> fart. I know. Man, he caught her with that back signal and then it was just love from there. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, man, the thirst. She was her character was so overwrought with thirstiness that that was a little cringy and unbelievable. And I'm shitting all over Batman Forever because there were some bad things about it. Like I said, Two Faces Batman, uh, Two Faces that movie was horrible. The Riddler can be kind of cringy. There were times where I felt like Val Kilmer was phoning in his performance. Um, well, but he, his, he did that a lot in the '90s. Yeah, he did. He really did. There's some stories about that. Yeah, but his Batman wasn't terrible. Yeah, but I mean, I'll concede Batman and Robin is probably the worst one. I mean, for sure, I get it. But I also, I also really loved um, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. But she—that's also the only Poison Ivy we have to go on now. She had some of the worst lines, and they absolutely had the worst portrayal of Bane in that movie. Yeah, he was the big gimp. Like, I mean, yeah, he was just, she was just like that was Poison Ivy's version of of Alfred. Like it wasn't even that. He was just a big dumb caveman gimp that she for some re- for some reason he obeyed her. Didn't he? That didn't even make sense. Yeah. So I mean, it was. So I didn't like that portrayal, um, of course. But he wasn't really a main character, but he was one of Batman's big villains. But I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I I thought Uma Thurman, so. Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, was and and I think that's you know her portrayal as Poison Ivy, I really enjoyed. You know she she was completely full of herself. She's all about Mother Nature, and she's, you know, she has, like, this presence, and she just saunters on screen, and, you know, everybody's yeah. watching her, and you believe it, because I'm just like, oh, bitch, oh, yes, Uma Thurman, yes, while yeah, I'm watching man. it, I'm just like, yes, bitch, and, <laughs> but, like, I, I mean, back in the day, I didn't know who Uma Thurman was, but I was just like, oh, yes, Poison Ivy, yeah. She was bad, all the dudes in the uh, yes. audience, I saw her, I was like, a what year was 1997, 98? Uh, what oh, year was I, Batman? I, it was 97. I'm I don't know. I didn't write the year down, but was, that sounds right, though. It was 97, and so I'm like 11 years old watching 11, 12, all of us in the audience. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, she bad. I, I want to be Poison Ivy for Halloween every year after that. But Her makeup, <laughs> aesthetically, her makeup was incredible. Her makeup, her her costumes were all over the top, but I mean, it was it was fun. She was fine. And I feel like she just took that role and she just went for it. No matter how bad the dialogue was, direction, whatever, she made the role her own. If you were to tell me that that was the same bitch from Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction, like no fucking 
way. Uma Thurman is underrated as a character actor. Yeah. She really is, man. And again, I think I go on these past performances, and that's why I was like, I just don't feel again. I compare her to Anne Hathaway because Anne Hathaway, she I don't know, she she just didn't have presence on screen to me, which is crazy because usually whenever Anne Hathaway is in a movie, like she's the one that I just go to and I look forward to in scenes, but in and Batman and um, The Dark Knight Rises, I just she was didn't a little, care for. She was a little buried so. in The Dark Knight Rises. I think that she was buried with, with the writing and with the directing. And we didn't get to see, as you said, Anne Hathaway's we're used to seeing. Like, right. You see her in Les Mis. She's a heavy presence on screen. She's amazing. Yeah. You know, she had a great presence. Well, she didn't have, well, I mean, she didn't have heavy, because she was only in, like, the first 30 minutes, 45 minutes. But Freaking still. memorable, though. And oh, she, yeah, completely she, memorable. She wants to what kind of presence Anne Hathaway has. She can hold her own against Meryl Streep. Yeah. I mean, damn, that says something. With Delaware's Prada, which is one of the biggest comedies of all time, mm-hmm. you know, she can hold her own. She's amazing. But there was just something about that movie that really buried her. And I, I mean, I get that. That's I think they just forced it in so that way they could show Batman interacting retired. with Catwoman. Well, no, that they show, you know, Batman has a closing arc and he's living out his life, not being Batman and with somebody that also comes with a background that he had. Yeah. But. That's just me. All right. Well, that's that's enough about Anne Hathaway. I'm I'm done talking about her. <laughs> I just I mean, obviously. is that where we left off? Poor Anne. Yes. Hathaway. Anyways, all right. So I think we're just going to now we we've kind of hit over everything um, that we wanted to talk about as far as like breaking down like best or worst. I think so. Yeah. We'll just do a rundown of the movies really quick because I just have like a couple of notes on here, especially on the 1966 Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out. Well, let's see. Well, we'll start with Batman Begins. Anything you want to say about that one? I mean, the best, uh, my opinion, Gotham is in Batman Begins. Um, I agree with you. It was so choppy, and it was the pacing in that movie was horrible. Yeah, it felt almost trailer like at times the way it jumped around. Um, and that was so frustrating because if you would have just slowed it down, we would have gotten so much more of a grown up movie. Um. You know, people would have taken more seriously if you could just would have slowed it down and made it less choppy. It would have been so much better. I would like to see a different cut of that movie. If they could somehow slow it down. Director's cut. Well, just no. I don't trust Christopher Nolan to do it because he <laughs> talked it up in the first place with making it so choppy. But yeah, just well, like I, I think. I mean, this isn't really a Christopher Nolan type movie. I think the second one is a better version of how he is as a director. I think that they had an. I think they had a vision for the Batman movie. And he was going off of the studio's version of that of that vert that the, the studio sec- version of that depiction, dark, and it I, I was mean, better the second time around. Maybe, I mean, the Dark Knight was the better movie, and it was less choppy, and it was better pacing, but it still had those issues. You know, it was no. just there was so much of a story to tell. Um, let me see. My notes on here: the father of death scene was weird. Um, he said, "Don't be afraid." And just like kind of died. Yeah, he didn't. He felt like he was just fainting. He didn't feel like he actually gotten shot. Yeah, it was, it was a bad. It was. Scene. It was just calm. It was. I don't know. It was weird. And uh, show the parents before they died, which was nice. Um, the and one of the only times where it they used bats as backup for Batman. Like he turned on that switch, that kind of like sent out a signal to the bats like a certain frequency yeah and went and pinpointed it and then used the bats for backup so i thought that part was cool that's that, cool as shit yeah. i don't think we saw that in the other movie only time we saw it was um in batman returns as whenever he used that against the penguin for like a second yeah that was basically it uh what about the dark knight again probably the best written batman movie of all mm-hmm. time had my issues with it um that one we have international batman yeah what International Batman. Batman goes to Hong Kong. What the hell is that? What? We haven't seen Batman oh, go international I sure, before. I remember, okay, never mind. I know what you're talking about. It's where, yeah, he literally goes to Hong Kong to bring back Lao kicking and screaming. Yeah. So that well, was those... great. Yeah. That scene was so dope when he dives off the building and into the. And then whenever he takes off with Lao. Yeah, that was dope. It gets picked up by the plane. Yeah. Um, I have escalation of Harvey Dent to Two Face is great. So... You know, I've always said that after rewatching it a year after the movie came out like in 2009 i was like you know what everyone's going crazy for heath ledger but as time goes on people are hopefully will pay more and closer attention to his two-face uh aaron eckhart's two-face because he, he did great man 
Um, I loved his Two Face. Yeah. Um, any other notes about Dark Knight you want to talk about? Um, we'll I mean, go through these pretty quickly because really. we've already it's, been it's, talking it's about it. It's the them. movie everybody in the mother has a heart on for, so it is. You don't, um, you don't have to say much about that one. All right, Dark Knight Rises. I have so Joseph Gordon Lovett's character just knows who Batman is, and they're just not going to question it. <laughs> Yeah, they did a piss poor job explaining how he knew who Batman is. Wait, because he looked at his eyes when he was a kid, and now he knows it was Bruce Wayne. It was the same face, yeah. eyes. Like, wait, no one else has done that, right? And then um, the loyal board member. Um, there is a board member in all three of Christopher Nolan's Batman movies that spoke up during like some kind of boardroom meeting, and uh, whenever um, the company went under or something, it went public. It went public the that board member was like this is wrong or he was standing up for bruce wayne yeah um i never figured out what his character name was but i thought that, that was cool because i remembered him from the other two movies and then um and, and then of course at the very end with joseph gordon lovett's character they were just like oh you should use your real name i like it and he's like oh robin and everybody i remember being in the movie theater and i was one of those people too i was like oh i got it but then i was like Robin was never a real name. Yeah, it was just a shoehorn <laughs> bullshit thing. Like, there. I get it. You could have had, um, you know. Why don't you use your birth name? Dick. Or, Dick Grayson. That would have been kind of cool. That would have. Or, or, uh, you, I would have even sell it for Jason Todd or Tim Drake. Oh, Instead he, of Blake, why, don't you, why do you go by Blake? Just go by Tim Drake, your real name. That would have been badass. Right. Robin, really? Robin, terrible. That was, yeah, that was really shoehorned in. Uh, and I put on there this, this one looks like New York. Um, what about the 1989 Batman? Anything else you wanted to say about that one? Beautiful, um, Gotham city. Mm -hmm. Um, amazing suit an amazing Batman's had a presence in that movie, like a motherfucker. Like you know, we hadn't seen again until Ben Affleck's Batman. Um, so it's probably, it's my favorite. Like again, the writing's better in mm -hmm. The Dark Knight. 89 Batman's still my favorite. Yeah, we didn't talk about uh, Billy D. William as Harvey Dent in the 1989 Batman. That was, I forgot about that. That was, that was cool. interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, when Joker is revealed, um, Joker reveal was cool. Why is everyone acting like they didn't know Bruce Wayne? What are you talking about? Which one? In the original, in uh, 89 Batman. What do you mean? Well, I mean, Batman's supposed to be... Or not Batman, I'm sorry. Bruce Wayne is supposed to be, you know, the the prince of Gotham. And everybody knows who Bruce Wayne is. Or but no one like, knows what he looks like? Yeah, why is why is everybody acting like they don't know what he looks like? Vicky Vale's from out of town, so I understand why she doesn't know. But the fact yeah. that that fucking two-bit reporter that's always Knox. up her ass, Knox, yeah. doesn't know what Bruce Wayne looks like. It was like, what the fuck, really? Oh, yeah. So, and I wrote, Mayor is same Mayor, like uh, Amity, Amity, well, I can't even say it, from Jaws. The festival goes on. He would not cancel that festival for nothing. Just like the mayor and Jaws wouldn't can cancel like people going to the beach. Yeah, man, it's the economy. So you better die for it. We found that out in real life too. Oh yeah, Batman kills in this version. Um, oh Prince, Prince doing the music for Batman was weird to me. Like it was all weird. all of those '90s Batman movies where I was like, the music is so. One of my place. favorite songs of all time is U2's um, Love Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, Thrill Me. Uh, is, is, but the one that people know more is Seal's Kiss from a Rose. That was mm -hmm. a badass video, a badass song. It worked, man. No. You don't like Kiss from a Rose? I, I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not saying I don't like the song. I'm going to say it doesn't fit with Batman. It worked. Not For 1995, man? Nah. Not at all. When that came on, I remember it premiered. Um, it didn't even premiere on MTV. I think it premiered. It sounds weird as it sounds. Let me show it on E Entertainment. Maybe. But it was. Everybody was talking about. Have you seen any music video with Seal? Man, I can't wait to go watch the new movie. That mm -hmm. music video did such a good job hyping the movie for us as kids than any trailer could have. Let's see. Batman Returns, ninety two. Anything you want to say about that terrible, one? We haven't already said. Terrible set. Terrible penguin. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's I. I love I love Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Yeah. Um, I love her arc. Yeah, her arc was fun. Yeah. Um, I've already aired my grievances about that one. So, <laughs> Batman Forever. 
terrible one-liners I put in here, but I didn't say what the one-liners were. Jim Carrey is great as Jim Carrey. <laughs> but as Riddler, not so much. Right. He was a funny Riddler. Oh, we actually got to see Arkham Asylum. I did write yeah, that. Yeah, it was the first time we got to see Arkham. Which, that really pisses me off. We don't have a good movie that shows the inside of Arkham, which, please, please, Matt Reeves, I know you'll never listen to this, and I know the scripts are already out there, but for fuck's sake, can we please have more Arkham Asylum scenes? Like, fuck. I know, it's such a, a vein of, of Gotham at this point, and it's become such an important part of um, the lore because of games, too, like Arkham Asylum, and in the comic books based on Arkham. Well, the it's, comic books based on Arkham, the games are heavily based around being around Gotham. A lot of the anime or not Gotham, um, have... Arkham Asylum. Like, it, fuck, can we get, can we please just get Arkham Asylum for fuck's sake? I know we saw a hallway or two in Batman Forever, um, and we saw, you know, that one prison room for Mister Freeze. Right. But that was basically it. Yeah, we really don't get into it. We don't get into the meat potatoes of everything that goes on in there. You know what's really interesting, though, is they're they're talking about because of uh, the Snyder Cut that was the fans pushed for it, and they got it, man. There's there's a rumor that there's going to be a a new cut of Batman Forever that's going to be released possibly on HBO Max. Oh, I did hear about this. That's going to be a much darker version of Batman Forever. That I did hear that, yes. Yeah, um, that Schumacher wanted, but the studio kept pushing him to give him something more campy, campy and comedic. Mm-hmm. The movie opens up. You can see some of these deleted scenes right now on YouTube, but the movie opens up at Arkham Asylum with them looking for Harvey Dent, and there was a body in its place of where his cell is. That's a dark opening. Yeah. I would totally be down for that. It would be interesting to see how they did it for sure. Yeah. So, um, and that might be a separate podcast that we talk about where as far as directors getting to revisit movies that have already been out and they get to remake because it, they're like, oh, I could have done this much different, but. The studios had gotten this, off my ass. Exactly. So I'm like, mm, I have, I have some grievances about all that. So I don't know. That might be a different podcast that we yeah, do. Re- it's inevitable. Visiting that. Um. All right. Anything else you want to mention about Batman Forever? No. <laughs> what about Batman and Robin? No. Go Uma Thurman. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um. Batman 1966. All right. So I wrote Batcar is cool. Um. Everyone loved Batman and Robin. They have an airplane! Exclamation point. Uh. Sharks! Exclamation point. <laughs> um. Shark repellent. LMAO. Uh, this movie has Catwoman, Joker, Penguin, and Riddler. Yeah, we get to see everyone at once. That's great. And they all work together. And they all argued, just like how I would expect them to be. And it was great. Loved it. I know. Uh, I I hope in future Batman movies they remember that and we get to see all of them interact. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Alfred got to drive the Batmobile. Uh, here's some of the one-liners that I have. Um, let's see. Holy Nightmare. Uh, Holy Holy Long John Silver. He says that? Yes. Man. Holy glue pot. And then one from Alfred. Bless my dustpan. Of course the butler um, would say that. <laughs> Christ. Uh, let's see. Holy bikini. And then um, I'll let you say your favorite line from the movie. Oh, there's two of them. Uh, it's whenever if people who are not familiar with the 1966 Batman. There was a scene in which the villains are able to dehydrate people and turn them into fucking sand, basically. Uh-huh. And then Burgess Meredith this penguin, which is the best part of the movie, goes, careful now. Whenever they're sc- scraping them into the dustpan, he goes, every one of them's got a mother. Yes. <laughs> that was so funny. And then the part at the end, whenever it's like the third act, and never Catwoman's bitching, and he goes, quiet, you feline floozy. And I'm like, damn. I could you, not believe I heard that whenever I Yeah, you I were laughing it. your ass off oh, when he said that. Oh, my Called gosh. her a feline floozy. A fe- and I wrote that down, too. Feline floozy. The best lines were Bur- Burgess Meredith's lines. Uh, he had oh, really funny so good. lines. They, seemed, they were so good, they seemed out of place the rest of the movie. You know, it seemed... Yeah. But no, that he was he was the best part of that movie, in my opinion. Yeah. I put on here, running around with the bomb was funny because uh, they were dodging nuns, baby, baby and a mom. That was like something band, out of Naked Gun. A couple and ducks. Like the ducks, oh my gosh. They just kept going from like one place to another. You couldn't get to rid of that damn bomb. bomb. He oh flat out said that some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. 
that was actually one of the most brilliant scenes that they had done in that movie. So it, funny. it was like something out of a Leslie Nielsen movie, and they, they killed it. It was great. Uh, let me see. I put, they run all the way to the United Nations. <laughs> uh, yeah, they run. Yeah, they ran from like one part of town to the other. Like, oh, okay. Uh, green screen looks better um, in this movie than in Batman Forever. So, damn. <laughs> I don't know what scene I'm talking about, but apparently, it was it was good enough for me to write it down. Um, let's see. I think. Oh, how they put together the rid, uh, the riddles. <laughs> they had like the sky is blue, and the night is dark, and they would somehow like they would just make up shit they're just like make sense with the riddles oh this is obviously penguin and riddler and catwoman and uh yeah, night, night. and joker working all together yeah broccoli broccoli is green green the riddler it's like it didn't make yeah. fucking sense it's like, wait, how the hell did you assholes get that this is the world's greatest detective oh my god it was so funny and another funny part to me was um was Catwoman playing um, that reporter, that Russian, Russian reporter. And she got captured with Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne is like, oh, I gotta, I gotta protect her. And it's really Catwoman the, the whole, whole time too. The whole damn time, you don't know it's Catwoman. I'm just like, really? She just wear, she just puts a mask on. But I was like, of course, you know, Batman just puts a mask and a costume on and they can't figure out it's Bruce Wayne. But oh man, that was, that part, they went back and forth playing around with that because yeah. they, at one point they captured Bruce Wayne to try to, to try to lure Batman to try to save him, not knowing, of course, that Bruce Wayne is Batman. And so Batman uh, or Bruce Wayne busts out and goes to find the reporter. And he was like, oh, she's gone. Where is Miss Kitka? What have you done with Miss Kitka, you fiends? Yes, Miss Kitka. It's, like, <laughs> it's fucking Catwoman in the room the whole damn time. And so she, you know, she realizes that she's trying, you know, that Bruce Wayne is trying to find her. And so she, like, changes really quick and gets back into the room. And she's like, they're holding me hostage until Batman gets here. Well, she does it in her Russian accent. Russian. I can't. I can't do a Russian accent. So, but it was. I mean, that back and forth was just so fun. I don't know. I really. I ended up liking the 1966 Batman so much more than I thought I was going to. You so were laughing your ass off the whole oh time. Oh my god, That's it funny. was just. It was just funny. It was just. It was funny. It was campy. I mean, it, it's it's funny to me how campy these movies were at the beginning of whenever they started coming out with these superhero movies and came out with a TV show. Yeah. Because of how dark the comic books are, I'm just like, how the comic books were always dark. People probably think that when you look at the 1960s Batman's or the 1970s Batman's, they were probably campy like that. And they were not. They weren't. Batman so that... was throwing criminals off of roofs back then. I mean, and that's why I'm just like, I'm surprised that you know they came out with a TV series that's as campy as it is. Because in comparison, the comic books are not like that at all. So the studio, the, the TV studios wanted that they didn't want anything dark they well wanted of course something yeah it was going to be acceptable for families of you with their kids at night and so that's why they went with that yeah um, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting i'm excited i'm excited to see how um because i feel like this batman is going to be more along the lines of what it was you know back in the day looking at you know i mean he's matt reeves is a huge fan of the long halloween um yeah which is a lot of what this is based on yeah and so i mean for him to be a fan of that to have the 70s version of the batmobile um mm -hmm. but yet it looks like a, a 1995 david fincher movie or like something out of seven mm -hmm. i am very curious as what we're going to end up with what the final product's going to be yeah very i mean the riddler so. already looks so cool oh, you my know God, paul dono lies I mean, yeah paul dono is so underrated like he's 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 i mean he was you can say he was an a-lister but not really he was always a secondary character in all these great movies like in there will be blood um and little Prison, miss sunshine prisoners, prisoners. don't get me wrong people walked away from, you know, talking about how incredible he was but he hasn't come on a movie this big before right um he paul dono is not a household name unless you've seen his movie because he does he does a lot of indie movies but he also does um you know the the Oscar movies as well, but sometimes like There Will Be Blood wasn't really like a big blockbuster movie, but it was a huge hit at the Oscar. Same with Loma Sunshine. Loma Sunshine came out and it was an indie movie. He picks his roles really um, well. He really does. Prisoners, Prisoners, I would say wasn't even that super popular whenever it came out either. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like it. And um, but yeah, Paul Dano picks his roles really well, and I think that for a darker version of Riddler, I think he's, 
I think he's going to be great. And what we've already seen in the trailer, like it, I mean, it doesn't look like Riddler, but it looks dope. It looks dope as hell. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited that the trailer came out while we were watching the Batman movies. Like it just happened yeah, to come out dropped, at the same and you time. You thought I was messing with you, like you said. Yes, because you know that's of course whenever I deleted my Twitter, like in my Twitter, and my Instagram, I was trying to have a social media break for the weekend, and of course, you know, every time I do that, some major news happens. So, and I was sitting there going, "Hey, uh, babe, the, uh, the the trailer just dropped for uh for the Pattinson's Batman." You're like, "Nah." Well, yeah, because I knew they they didn't get to film a lot before production shut down because of Corona. It was a nicer, and it was. When I heard that it was a teaser trailer, the first thing I thought was just some fan made bullshit. And then I'm like, wait, this is trending. This is real. Mm-hmm. And I figured it to be like 10 seconds of something. I was like, this like a is teaser. A legit fucking trailer. It's a legit trailer. It was, I mean, and they've only filmed, like, I think I read like 30% of the movie. So for. That's nuts. It's nuts considering what we got from the trailer. It's completely crazy to me. But I'm, I'm loving the direction it's going in. I love the blood red aesthetic that it has going on. I love just the. Oh, just the feel of it. Like you said, it's like a very seven feel. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm loving everybody that's in it. I'm very excited. Back in, after, I said this when I was a kid, back after Batman and Robin came out, uh, and even after Batman Begins came out, I was just like, I really wish David Fincher would do a Batman movie. You know how incredible that would be? Yeah. This is the closest thing we're going to get to it. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the final product is. Uh, it might suck. Hopefully it won't. Because I trust Matt Reeves, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I think that 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 sums it up for me. I mean, I that this was probably the most cathartic podcast I think I've ended up having in a while. Yeah, we do we do a lot of Batman. Um, we do a lot of Batman podcasts. Like we did a uh, a podcast based off of the casting, uh, whenever the casting was originally announced for the Batman movie. Um, and did we do did we do one that was a dreamcast or we just talked about we, we we talked about doing one but we we all we did was talk shit about the casting so far we didn't talk about our dreamcast yeah we didn't talk about the uh, a dreamcast which um is a lot of like the three batman um the robin characters and who we, we want to see as like poison ivy catwoman um and um barbara gordon um things like that so we I mean, we could do a podcast uh, about our dream casting for movies if y'all are um, interested. So do I want to talk about it right now? Shit. No, <laughs> we'll talk about it in a separate podcast because this is already like we've already recorded seventeen hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We recorded a lot. <laughs> so, um, so if you hung out with us till till uh, now, thank you so much. Like we kind of we we revisited a lot of things that we talked about, but like Miguel said, this was very cathartic for us because we were huge Batman fans. And so we love to talk about Batman. We love to talk about casting for Batman. Like we will just randomly, we'll just say a name and we'll, oh, okay. I, I know exactly what you're thinking of and who they're like for casting for Batman. But we talk about casting for a lot of movies that we're interested in. So if y'all want to, um, if y'all want to have that uh, podcast, just let us know and we'll, we'll definitely record it and uh, post it for you guys. Our dream, our dream Batman casting. Uh, but again, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, if y'all agree, disagree with anything that we discussed about um, the movies, let us know in the comments below so we can talk about it uh, some more. Um, thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you again next time.